Ms. Garcia playing both sides? Come on, Lieutenant. Garcia was a clean cop, you know that. He couldn't have done it without you. I'm a cop too, remember? I've been worried about Garcia for a while. What were the signs? What's always the sign? Cash. You go on. A while back. <laughs> He's got in a big jam. Claire's doctor bills. Some stupid house loans I got myself into. So I went, I went to Gar, without even saying a word. He goes into his bedroom, and he comes out. When he comes out, he lays $10,000 on me. The night before, me and Garcia went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tebow. I come on shift, get in the car. Garcia's arguing with somebody. Says that he's still a cut. And if he doesn't get it, <laughs> you know. When Dinkins turns up dead, you just put your head in the sand. <coughs> Why didn't you come to me? There's more. If you go into Garcia's bedroom closet, you find the rest of the money. I don't know how much exactly, but it's a lot. <coughs> dead perps, dead cops, dead ends. That pretty much sums it up. You forgot to mention the two sick brothers. That's because they don't seem to fit in anywhere. All right, so let's go over what we know. Dinkins was probably our patient zero. And we can't ask him where he's been or who he's been with. And the one guy we know he saw, this Garcia... ...is also dead. It's pretty inconvenient. So we have no way of backtracking patient zero to find the source of the plague. And wherever he got it, it could still be spreading. Connor. Steven, I think you better come over here. I just finished my gross examination of Dinkin's body. I found a few things that don't make sense. There were small pieces of a rubberized compound under a broken fingernail, and there was mud in his nasal passages. Well, Dinkin's body was found in the Chesapeake, and I'm pretty sure there's mud and sand in the bay. Not this mud. What do you mean? I compared the mud from Dinkin's to the mud that you found on the boy's glove in Virginia. It's the same mud, same plague bacillus in both samples. Wait a minute. Dinkins was at the field in Virginia where the boys were exposed? His body was at the field. He wasn't breathing when the mud entered his nose. There were no traces of it in his sinus cavities or lungs. His body had to have been buried in the field after he was murdered. And someone dug his body up later and dumped it in the Chesapeake? That's what doesn't make sense. That person couldn't have been Detective Garcia. I mean, looking at the degree of decomposition, I would estimate that Dinkins was murdered four days ago. Before Garcia was hospitalized. Right. So Garcia could have killed Dinkins, but he couldn't have dug up the body. Exactly. The level of tissue saturation indicates that Dinkins' body was placed in the Chesapeake Bay no longer than 24 hours before his body was found. Garcia was already dead at that point. Then Dinkins was moved because of us. Because of us? Why? Because if we figured out how the boys and the cops both became infected with plague, we'd know who was really involved in Dinkins' murder. And it wasn't just Detective Garcia. Dinkins was murdered in here. I'm telling you, I'm sick. I'm sick won't be your only problem. You lied about it. Son of a bitch! <laughs> Hey, hey! What the hell are you doing? There's no way to treat a friend. God! Especially one that gave us three hundred thousand. So we're gonna let him go, right? Yeah, Rook. We're gonna let him go.
fought for his life. This explains the rubbery substance found under Dinkins' fingernails. And why this bathroom was so clean when we got here. They were covering their tracks. Give me the ball, Tim. Last pitch. I'm gone after this. What do you think the boys contracted the plague bacillus? Exactly where Garcia and Lineberger left it. Right where they buried the body. The same mud that Natalie found in the nasal passages of Dinkins' body. The damn dog knew what this hole was the entire time. Even after Adams came out here to move the body. Just in case we came out here looking for the source of their infection. The evidence against Adams is circumstantial, but I've seen the DA make flimsier cases. We're not going to the DA. We can nail this guy for murder. Frank, you're thinking like a cop. Our priority is to find the source of the plague. Dinkins didn't just fall out of the sky. Lives are still at risk. Look, you don't think I know that? All right, we'll put the squeeze on Adams. He'll fold, make a deal. Or he stonewalls us, or hides behind a lawyer, or worse, he just disappears. Steven, we don't report this. We're obstructing justice here. Look, first things first. Let's find the source of this plague, and then if everything falls our way, we'll get justice too. You know, if you don't want to be part of it, that's cool. <laughs> what do you want to do now, man? We get Adams to help us. Well, he won't know it. You were right. The gentamicin wasn't strong enough to fight this thing. You switched the patients to chlorophenicol. Started them all at 50 milligrams per kilogram of heat. How are they responding? Well, the fevers are coming down. They all seem to be feeling better. Thank God. No, no, no. We're not out of the woods yet. Any side effects? CBCs are showing early signs of anemia, but I'll keep an eye on it. Good work. Keep me posted. Yeah. Let's go check on him. Frank. Found the source of the plague. Where? You're not going to believe this. Dinkins' money. Stuff's totally contaminated. Wait, the bills we found in that box in the air vent? And that Garcia has blew me away, too. Double check my results. Came up positive both times. You got the cash from the police evidence lockup. They gave us some to test. It was a total shot in the dark. But this is the commonality we've been searching for. Dinkins touches the money, passes it on to Garcia, then he passes it on to Lineberger. So how does this work with the kids from Virginia? Dinkins could have spent some of that contaminated money in Virginia. All right, we need to track down any of Dinkins' money that might still be in circulation. Already on it. I'll be surprised if we don't see more cases, and soon. Anyone who touched that cash is at risk of contracting plague. Who's there? Dr. Connor. It's going through Gar's stuff. I found a map leading here. I know why you're here, Lieutenant. We both do. Right. The way you arranged it that would find that police file in Dinkins' air vent? Or the money you planted in Garcia's house? Coach Lineberger to tell the perfect story to make Garcia look dirty. You are scary good. You can take the mask and gloves off. I lied to you about Dinkins' money being contaminated. Yeah, I know as a liar, I'm not in your league, but apparently it was good enough. This other way. You're wearing a wire, aren't you? No wire. I know you murdered Lawrence Dinkins. So I don't want some lame confession. That's not why I'm here. So what do you want? I want you to tell me where Dinkins was when he contracted plague. I had no idea. You smug son of a bitch. I got a pretty good idea what kind of man you are. Hey, you think so? Yeah, I think so. You go through life, calculating risk and reward, making your moves, protecting yourself from anyone who might do you harm, even killing enemies if need be. But I know there's another side. The side of you that cradled that baby in your arms. The side of you that cared. 
There are other babies out there that are getting sick. Only they won't be as fortunate as Chris Leinberg or those two young boys from Virginia. They won't get help on time. They'll just die. Painfully. Like Gar. I don't think you're the type of man who wants to see that happen. Connor, there's something over here you need to see. I think this might brighten your day. They'll both make a full recovery. Bad time? No, no. What's up? I just got off the phone with the Mexican consulate. Thanks to Adam's information, the village where Dinkins went to arrange the last heroin shipment's been quarantined. How many did they find infected with plague? Thirty, so far. Ten dead. Ten. But it could have been a lot worse. Now they have the source of the plague contained, and they're treating everyone with antibiotics. Just wish we could have gotten there sooner. Stephen, we saved the lives of hundreds of potential victims and prevented what could have been a massive epidemic, not to mention the lives of the people we saved here. I think that's pretty good. I guess you're right. everything they could. I'm sorry for your loss. I don't understand. The doctors tried. And they, they couldn't save her. She's gone, Stephen. That must have been so hard on your family. My mom, she, uh, she never really recovered from what happened. My dad, he still spends his life pretending that it didn't. What about you, Stephen? How do you cope? By trying to prevent others from ever feeling the same way. by never forgetting. <laughs> <laughs>